One of the things that I think is kind of interesting is people assume that real estate is like selling homes is kind of a part-time job. Like, you know, you, I always love when people say, oh, I'm a real estate agent and a school teacher. I'm like, how? Yeah. How? Oh. How are you a real estate agent and a bartender? And anything else. Yeah. I mean, it literally takes all, all your, your time. time. Yeah. And that it's like kind of glamorous. Mm. It is not glamorous. Mm -mm. What are some of the worst things you've done or like experienced? Oh, well, the first thing is I've got, I get in numerous crawl spaces. Well, not on purpose yeah. either. Like to check for what type of beams there are. Is there raw? Is there rodents? What is that? you know, smell. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I've been in crawl spaces. Water. Where's the water coming from? Oh, I can one up that. Last week, last week, we had a house that was ready to be shown or, or like it was, we had styled the whole thing. It was done, ready. And we were ready to like do an open house. Well, the cleaners came the night before and they had forgotten one of the bathrooms, numerous mm. bathrooms in this house. Mm -hmm. All I had on hand was some like uh, wipes, you know, Clorox wipes. It just happened to be in my car and some like spray. So and and paper towels. And so I cleaned every surface I could. And then I opened the lid of the toilet. Enough. Done. You had to clean a toilet. A very disgusting toilet. Got it. I can see by your face. Lindsay, how many that toilets have I plunged Leslie, in other with people's homes? My hand. I know. That's worse than a crawl space. No. Oh, absolutely. Lindsay, I have plunged people's poop as it overflows on the ground. Leslie, my staging towels have been wadded up because <sighs> people don't think, like, let me find the bathroom in the house that the agent stocked with toilet paper, which I always leave a bathroom fully stocked. Instead, they go to whatever bathroom they want. Yeah. And then have used my towels. Oh, I know. And I know they're used because they're wadded and, and sh shoved in a corner. Yeah. The amount of children that have taken bites out of our fake apples, fake oh, oranges, yeah. fake lemons. That's just cute. It is. I mean, kind of. They think it's real. <laughs> Bite it. But yeah, my towels. Yeah. Get, yeah. So That's it's gross. Disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Have you ever had somebody, because I have... I went to a listing appointment once and I had somebody who did not want, or it wasn't a listing appointment. I take that back. I was showing a buyer. We really wanted to see a house. They really wanted to see it. And it was during like, you know, short sale, bankruptcy mm -hmm. season. The seller of this house wasn't really motivated to sell. So every time we'd schedule an appointment, they'd, you know, say no or make an excuse, whatever. Well, then the bank forced them to let us see the home. So we showed up, went to the door, and a gentleman opened the door all the way. And also all the way open was his robe. <laughs> I remember. He was With buck naked. nothing else on. Mm -hmm. Did I, you guys see the home? Oh, I saw plenty at that point, and we left. Yeah. Leslie, that was, I was fairly young in real estate. Fairly young in life. And I was scarred. Yeah. I'd never seen one that <laughs> <laughs> bent to the left. Oh yeah. Well, during those times, like I can't, oh. I can't tell you how many houses we went in where there were squatters, people sleeping in oh. rooms. They'd used our staging, taken all of our bedding, made their own little places. Like we'd have to call out, "Is anybody here? Is anybody yeah. here?" Do we you found remember the one where yeah. there was a lady that was in had a drug overdose, and she was in the room. She, it was, she wasn't over ODing. She just had. Well, you she know, was partaking strung out. and strung out. Yeah. yeah. So we had to call the cops. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was, I mean, during the short sale days, you saw everything. 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 In homes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We once had a client that was superstitious, or I don't know what you call it, maybe religious, superstitious. I don't know. But Barry A. Joseph. Oh, yes. St. Joseph. St. Joseph. Yes. At the end of the driveway, but couldn't remember where they buried it. Yep. So asked us to unbury it. Yep. Because there was a week of like, you know, hard negotiations during inspection. And they thought maybe St. Joseph was no longer bringing them good fortune. Yep. So we went out to unbury it thinking it would be easy. Surely. I mean, it's just in this 
general area. Under this bush. It would have to be maybe barely covered by some leaves. 45 minutes later and oh. a hole. Oh, Leslie, it was way inches, more. inches, 12 inches. Way more than 45 minutes. Yeah, hours probably. Yeah. And we found him. The kids found him. I know, with Miles and Kyler. Yeah. And now Miles is selling him the guy. St. Joseph? No. Oh. Guy, the guy that buried him. Oh. Richard? Yes. Selling him a new home. I can't believe you remember that. Yeah. And I, when, I, when Richard called into the brokerage to buy a house, I said, oh, I'm actually going to have you work with Miles. He's selling real estate now. As a matter of fact, he's the one that unburied St. R- Saint Joseph. Joseph 10, 12 years ago when we sold your home. That is so funny. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Do you remember uh, the house that we went to for that appointment, that listing appointment? Where the man tried to kidnap you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. That one was crazy. That was scary. That's the only time in real estate that I feel like we were unsafe. Yeah, we were probably unsafe other times. Well, the only time I felt unsafe. Agree. And um, we realized you should never go anywhere alone in real estate. Yes. So you, me, Erica, that was working with us at the time, still is. She's our managing broker. Um. I think Brandy was with us at the time. I can't remember who all, but we all put the Life 360 yes. so we could see each other. That's right. The man was expecting you to show up. Just by myself. And I showed up with you and he was angry. Very upset. That I was there and wanted me to leave, but you to stay. And kept trying to get me to further into the, to home. the home. Yeah. Yeah. And we left and called the cops and informed the MLS, but it was so scary. That was a very scary situation. Mm-hmm. But the amount of the amount of situations that we've been in where like people think that their home is decorated beautifully, like all Seahawks colors, all Bronco colors, all, you know, Raiders, black and gray, like sure. sports teams. Yeah. Sports teams are always, oh yeah, always an issue that we come up against. Or, you know, they make a decision to you know, take out all of the cabinets in their kitchen, literally. Oh, yeah. And do, you know, open concept or something. Just just shelves. To the extreme. Yeah. And it's like, how do you inform them this is a horrible decision and you just took away so much value from your home? Yeah. We've done it. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I just thought of another funny story. Oh, no, what? Do you remember the time that we thought our day was done? And it was about two o'clock in the afternoon. So you and I decided to go across the street. This was when we were working in Mill Creek. We decided Uh, to go across the street. I I know exactly where you're going. And we decided to get chips and salsa. Hey, afternoon margaritas. Afternoon margaritas. What could go wrong? It's a Friday. What could go wrong? And we're not big drinkers. So a good margarita and a half, maybe two, I think we had. And we were giggling. We were giggly. All of a sudden we get a call. From the office. The office. Your four o'clock is here. Our what? Oh, forgot to add that one to the calendar. So <laughs> we're walking back across the street. Oh, yeah. And we I get halfway across the, the crosswalk. crosswalk. And I look at you dead face. And dead I serious. said, Leslie, I can't do this. I can't do this. I, th- I, I, I think, think I'm drunk. I think I'm drunk. And you said, pull, pull it, it together. together. You wind back your hand. And you slapped me so hard across oh, the man. face. I, you could hear that down the street. I said, pull it together. Boom. Bam. And I went, no, you're right. I got this. I got this. And I just walked in and I did that appointment. Like, I mean, I, we secured that listing. Lindsay, in about 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes. Thank God he had already chosen us. And then we crawled under, under our, our desk and we took a good hour and a half nap. Oh, before we drove home, we were passed out. Oh, man. And that handprint was Was, on my face. Oh, easily, easily for three or four days. You had bruises there. Oh, my gosh. Never again did I day drink. Never, never. At least on a work day. No. Oh, man. I I remember (sighs) that was that was a good a good reminder to double, triple check your calendars. Yeah. before, Before you take an early lunch. Yeah. Or late lunch. Leslie. That was a bad one. That, I think that's the only time you've ever actually real slapped me. Absolutely. I can't think of any Why other Why else t- would I ever real slap you? 
I, I mean, I've wanted to. Well, absolutely, man, Les, but the, I can still so vividly remember that moment. And I just thought to myself, that was the right choice. Yeah. She made the right choice. I sure I did. I needed that slap. You did. I really did. You I pulled, did. I remember I pulled my hair down, my hair across yeah, so my that cheek. Yeah, you couldn't see so it. So man couldn't And you see sat it. like this. You sat like this in the meeting. Yep. And I just, yeah, I secured that listing. Oh, I remember. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember. That was good. How many animal, though, animal stories or animal things have we had to deal with? Oh. Animals. I mean, dogs, for sure. Of course. Relocating cats. I personally have taken four cats that I know of. Because people... Oh, rooster. Well, yes, the rooster for sure. But I've taken four cats that people have either left behind, yeah. informed us the day of that they needed to rehome, that was boxed up. We showed we, up to a lady's home. Yeah. And she, we brought her a closing gift. Yep. And she said, oh, and I have my cat in this box. I and can't take I it can't with me. I can't take it with me. It it's can't too, make the trip. too far of a drive. And handed us a box with a <laughs> cat in it. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I was driving. The box was on your lap. And oh. all of a sudden, that cat. <laughs> and its hand <laughs> came through the box. And I was like, holy, what? Oh, Lindsay. Oh, Les, there was a lot of. A lot said. of words said. And you were screaming. Screaming. That poor cat just went out of the box. What was I supposed I don't know whether it's a cat. Lindsay, those things are not to be trusted. They are very dangerous animals. Very dangerous. I remember. And you were holding that box down. Oh, God. <laughs> it was shaking. I was so oh, scared. Oh, you were so scared. Luckily, we captured and released that cat. Yeah. Yeah. We gave it to a good home. Way better neighborhood. I do have one cat, though, that I still have. Yeah. Pearl. Yep. Which came from. A homeowner, that, lovely couple, lovely couple that rehomed their cat to me. Yep, that's a great. That cat. is an amazing cat. She's amazing. Yeah, but other than that one, the other three or four cats that I have been asked to take are no longer to be known where they're at. They're little satans. Yeah, they are. So, do you remember the house we sold? Were you an agent at the time, or were you just like an assistant? I can't remember. Blurry lines. Yeah. Too far, too long ago. Yeah, it is. So there was a house we sold out in Snohomish. At the time, it seemed like it was so far out. Now it's about where you live. Oh, yeah. Not even as far, probably. Yeah. But didn't it seem like it was so far out at the time? Lindsay, I thought we'd have to stop for gas on the way. I Honestly, it was yeah. so far yeah. out. Electric cars wouldn't make it that far. It was so far at the time. Mm -hmm. And we sold it. We staged it. We sold it. We did an awesome job. Pat New on our back. I mean, big time Pat. New buyers move in, we get a phone call. Or the new buyers are about to move in. Mm -hmm. We get a phone call. The chicken has been left behind. We were told chicken. Previous owner left the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. I knew nothing about chickens. I had chickens. So I felt like you're probably equipped to deal with this. I could deal with the chicken. You told me we could pick it up and drop it off at the co-op. Yes. In a box. We're driving a Jag. Because your car is in the shop. And that's what they gave us. They gave a you a Jag. We had a friend at the time who gave us nice loaners. It was a brand new Jag yep. at the time. You're driving fast oh, on those back roads. They were back roads. It was country. Way out there. We get there. We get to the, to the coop. It's not a chicken. It's a rooster. Oh, whatever it was, was pissed. Mean. Its neck was like this long. Its feathers were... <laughs> and it looked like it had not been fed in... Months. Oh, it was pissed. Yeah. It was pissed. Yes. I realized I forgot a box. Yeah. To you put forgot, the chicken in. You forgot everything. Everything. So we searched the whole property. Logically, I have a Nordstrom bag in the car. Why wouldn't you? I empty out my new Nordstrom purchase. Give you the bag. Yes, you did. Say, capture the rooster in the bag. You told me it'd be easy. I thought it would. I have no experience with these things. How bad could it be? It was a pretty big coop. Oh, it was bad. Put you in there, shut the door because I don't want the rooster to come out, and I'll film it. Filmed the whole thing. Unfortunately, the quality was pretty bad because we were so far out. Yeah. But I got a couple yells on there. You capture the rooster in the bag. Oh, The Les. bag's going crazy. Now it's like, where do we do with this bag? Leslie. Oh. We put the bag with the rooster in, in the, the trunk. trunk. Shut the door. Well, now we feel like mafia. Mo logically. Obviously. Has anybody seen us capture this rooster? Nobody's seen it happen. 
Peel, Nobody knows it's happened. Peel out. Can't let the neighbors see us. So you drive like a mad woman out of there. We got to get out of there before there's any evidence that we just captured the rooster in the Nordstrom bag. And the rooster is pissed. pissed. We get to the co-op. Now we realize they don't want to take a rooster. And how are we going to get the rooster out of the trunk? I go inside. I say, hey, I have a rooster. They say, we don't take roosters. I said, did I say rooster? I'm in a chicken. I'm sorry. Lovely, friendly chicken. Lovely, friendly chicken. She's been enjoying the ride. Yes. Where do I drop her? Yeah. They said, well, if it's a chicken, you could put her over there in that cage. Great. Great. Back that jag up. Back that jag up. Pop that trunk. Release that chicken. Peel, Peel out. out. She's safe. He's safe. Eh. Blurry lines. Blurry lines. Yeah. Man, that, again, one of the weirdest things we've ever dealt with. Having to capture a but eh, chicken rooster. I feel like it's been at least six years and we haven't been called. I don't think we left our number. I don't. And we were driving an unidentified vehicle. Okay. Yeah. So I feel I feel good about what we did. Yeah. About our choices. Me too. At the time. At the time. Probably one of the worst things we've done. I would agree. Other than when I gave away the curtains. <sighs> Do we talk about that? I mean, I did it in a, in a sales transaction once. We were closing the next day, and I had a buyer get the house cleaned the day before closing. Because it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. She and we want... got permission for it. The seller said absolutely. We could clean it. It was vacant. Yep. She did not want to move into a dirty home. So Who does? I stayed there the entire She'd time. always get the house cleaned and change the toilet seats. Absolutely. You don't know what happened on those toilet seats. Probably they used the restroom. But yeah, other people's b bums. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm there. I'm getting the house cleaned. The buyer's with me. I'm there the entire time. Yep. As we're getting it cleaned, the buyer says, oh, cleaner, I don't like those curtains. They're not curtains. They're they were, drapes. They were giant valances and drapery. Huge drapery on about 10 floor to ceiling windows. 20 foot. In a $3 million home. She says, oh, I don't like those. Can you take those down so you can get the windows really clean? No problem. She takes them down, puts them in the laundry room. As we're leaving that day, about an eight hour clean. Easy. The cleaner says, hey. The buyer says she doesn't like those drapes. Can I take them? My mom would love them. Sure. Then I don't have to get rid of them. The buyer doesn't have to get rid of them. Logically, that makes sense. Packs them up and takes them. The next day we go to close the deal in escrow. Escrow calls and says, hey, there's been a situation. The seller cannot sell their home. It's all the way to escrow. Okay. I'm not thinking anything of these curtains. Of course. I'm thinking my buyer just lost their home. And by the way, P.S., they had already sold their home. Exactly. Yeah. So they're homeless. Yeah. So I call my buyer and I say, I'm so sorry. You can't buy this home. Yeah. The seller can't sell anymore. Their house is now being held for collateral for some reason. Yeah. A couple days go by. I get a call from that agent of the selling home. Hey. My sellers want to know where the curtains are. I don't what, remember what, any curtains. What curtains exactly? The big drapery in the front room? Hmm. Let me, uh, have you checked the closets? <laughs> I think the cleaners took them down. You should probably check the closets. Call the cleaner. Hey, I need those curtains back. Oh, I gave them to my mom. Uh, call your mom. I need the curtains back. Calls me back. My mom got rid of them. Go check with your mom again. I need those curtains back. Sorry, my mom got rid of them. Oh my gosh. Call the seller, selling agent. I say what happens. You know, I gave them to the cleaner. What can I do? The seller writes me a letter that says, I want my curtains back or $10,000 by the end of the week. I wrote them a $10,000 check. No, I had no other option. Nothing you could do at that point. You literally gave away somebody else's possessions. possessions. Probably the she, biggest mistake. 
hugest lesson I've ever learned in real estate. Agree. You don't give, give away other people's really things. ugly crap yeah. until someone else owns it on their sale and says you can. Yep. Yep. Biggest, biggest lesson I've learned. I would agree. Other than always bring a box when you're capturing a chicken. How much did that 10K check hurt you to write? Oh, are you kidding, Linz? I mean, I was maybe a year into real estate. Yeah. It was all of the money in my uh, in my business account. I mean, I I think at that point I had closed a couple of deals. Yeah. Like that was, it's not like I had $10,000 sitting around like it was easy. No. I mean, I don't even now. You know, that would still be a big check to write. Painful. But it was not an option. Yep. I did not have a choice. Yep. But if we want to talk about one more animal story, one of my favorite animal stories is Tony and Ariel. First time, oh. we've we've bought and sold with them two or three times now. But when they were first married yes. and bought their first condo, yep. Ariel wanted a dog. She really so wanted a dog. She wanted a German, no, no she golden wanted a retriever. golden retriever. And we said, hey, for your closing gift, we're going to buy you a golden retriever. Yep. And Tony thought there was no, no way, way we'd do we it. would do it. And we showed up on closing day with a little golden retriever with a name tag made that says, I love l and L." And we gave him that golden retriever. Tony was pissed. Oh, yeah. But and Eric, that was actually part of the uh, joy of all of it. Oh, that I'd do it again today. Absolutely. If I could find another golden retriever to buy. And that, that puppy was probably one of our most expensive closing gifts we've ever bought. Probably. But, man, that was fun. That was Showing up it. on their doorstep with a puppy. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Okay, Les. So then to wrap this up, we're going to answer one question from last week's podcast or okay. whatever that was. So... Here is a question. It's from E-A-M-F-B. Okay. And she wants to know what it's like juggling family life with running the company and filming. I think I just summed it up. (laughs) That was a really good sum. Um, Gosh, running. So what's it like juggling family life with running the company and filming? Well, I think one of the things you and I always say is we uh, check and balance each other a lot. So like when I'm overdoing it, like you'll call me out or when you're overdoing it, I'll call you out. Yeah. You, we hold each other accountable because yeah. we both have the personality to go, 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 go. Yep. I remember last Friday, we were supposed to film. It was our fourth day filming last week. You called me in the morning. You said, I don't want to do today. No, opposite sister, you called me and said, no, you oh, called wait. me. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It was Thursday you didn't want to film. Yeah. That's right. I didn't want to film Thursday. Thursday. And I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going. I'm not filming. That's right. That's I'm not right. doing it. And I had a stinky attitude yep. all day. Yeah, and I was like, sister. I was exhausted. Yeah, I remember, I remember. And then you woke up Friday, Friday. morning. And you're I like, I, was I don't want to. You were too tired yep. because we were doing pickups yep. for a social media post we had. Yes. And you were like, I don't want to do it. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I don't. And I was like, Linz, we're going to get through it. Yep. Make it an early day. Just lay around all weekend. Take Sunday, which was Father's Day, to just lay with Justin. Yep. Don't do anything. Go to church. Lay in the yard. Play with your plants. You know, whatever. Ooh, I, with my plants. Listen, I don't know what you do with your plants, <laughs> but all I know is every time I call you on the weekend, you're like, oh, I'm doing this with my plants. I water my plants every week. It takes me 10 minutes. So I'm not sure what you're doing with your plants or you're using it as an excuse. No, so Leslie. I can't answer phone with plants. I swear that's the text message no. you send me. I, you have to give your plants a bath. Do you ever give them a, a like a no? OK, no. Why would you bathe the plant? No, it's to like clean the soil. You use a little bit of hydrogen peroxide with the water and then you you like flush them till water comes out the bottom of them and it cleans like the soil and stuff. Okay. Anyways. No. So that's why you're always playing with your plants. Yes. I just water mine okay. once a week. But um, I think we check each yes, other. a lot. Yeah. I think also like what it's like to juggle filming, family, the businesses. I mean- it's it's a lot, mm-hmm. but it's also a season, you know? 
it's not that lasts forever. Not forever, but it's a season. There's so many benefits that we see from all these things. Filming is great for the business, mm -hmm. great for the community. Our business is great for the 40 plus employees we have. The family, we give so much more to the family when you're so aware and attentive of the attention that you need to be giving them. Yeah, it's not the autopilot. Yeah. You know, so it's like they they all play off of each mm -hmm. other. Yes, it's a lot. Yes, we can make our lives simpler, but we enjoy what we're doing. We always say we thrive in chaos. Yeah. I thrive a little more in chaos. I would agree. You definitely like your downtime a little bit more. I need my yeah. downtime. I thrive in chaos. I don't necessarily watch TV shows to relax. I like to go to sporting things to relax. So it's just different mentalities. Yeah. But as long as we're both finding our relaxed time yeah. and our time. And kids go so fast. Yeah. You know, I mean, Miles is 19. I He's mean, out of the house. My baby is 13, almost 14. So I can't miss a minute of it. Yeah. And that's like we just we have to prioritize those things. Yep. Yep. If you guys like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast. And thank you for listening on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you're listening. Remember to leave comments so we can answer some of your questions. We love reading through them and we'll do our best to answer them all. You've been listening to Twin Win Unfiltered. Unfiltered.